Jindosh is taken care of. Now we need to find Sokolov. Speaking of Sokolov, this is painting. And here's a note from Brianna Ashworth. It will be our next target when we're done here in the Clockwork Mansion. These Clockwork soldiers drop these plaques. I don't really know exactly what they do. I keep picking them up, but don't really know what they do. We can immediately take the elevator down to the assessment chamber. There's other paths to go as well, of course. But this is arguably the fastest. There's a wall of light up here, but... Since we're coming from this side, we can immediately turn it off. Via pulling out the whale oil tank. There's a patrolling guard around here. There she is. And here's a bone charm. And I accidentally closed the drawer, but there we go. Nothing particularly amazing. Soon enough, we'll be starting to upgrade our powers. And then we can start taking a look at bone crafting. I know I've said that a whole bunch of times, but don't worry, we'll get over it. I keep almost getting seen because I want to let them finish their little line of dialogue. Might be a bit risky. Maybe I should stop doing that. So this is the maze, so to speak, where he's locked Anton Sokolov. You can see him through the wall or the ceiling right here. Although, zoom in, it suddenly gets a lot murkier. There is one clockwork soldier patrolling this little area. There is a special action, which is generally just like a note at the end level screen. If you manage to get in, get Sokolov and get out without not like notifying the clockwork soldier at all. But it doesn't really give you an achievement, nor does it give you anything in particular else, aside from just, hey, you did a thing. So, we might as well just play it safe and use a stun mine. I end up placing it sort of on the wall. Which is perfectly fine. Now the rest of the maze is barely a maze at this point. You just end up standing on the pressure plates every now and then. First of all, what you want to do before you go straight to Sokolov is go around the side to find some items, including stun mines, which we just used, and then rewire tools that we haven't ended up using that much. They are nice, but the risk is that they go and kill another guard or something, and then suddenly you're not playing non-lethal anymore. That does count as you killing someone. So. Before we talk to Sokolov, there's a painting here called the Topology of Grim Alex. You might remember Grim Alex is what the personality that is the crown killer names herself. Horrible. It would have to be you. Perhaps Megan came for you in Dunwall. But Jindosh, he's alive, but I burned his mind out. Used one of his machines against him. Well, that's the Corvo I remember. <laughs> then he passes out. Now, for some reason, the game can't be saved. I think it was in the middle of auto-saving or something, but... So, now that we have him, it's pretty much just go and leave as soon as we can. Uh, you can take multiples of paths, but the easiest way is the one we took to get down here. That's the least opposition there. We really only need to deal with one clockwork soldier. If you try to go through a different elevator, you end up suddenly running into a bunch of guards. And, well, 
they do tend to not like you very much if you're walking around with someone slung over your shoulder, especially if it's Sokolov, their prisoner. Like I said, there are many, many things in this area, runes, bone charms, blueprints, and lots and lots of money, and I fully intend to pick it up, but it wouldn't be particularly interesting for you guys to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and drop off Anton Sokolov, then cut while I run back in and pick up as much as I can get, and then we'll restart when we're good to go. For now, though, it's back the same way. Go to the elevator, all the way up to his office. I suppose we can probably go to the main laboratory. It doesn't really matter at this point, because the office is right above the main laboratory, so you can then jump down. Though I suppose going to the main laboratory would have been slightly faster. If you fall too far when you're carrying someone, you do end up dropping them. So you might want to have like a step between as you fall. This place is one of my favorite levels. It's, it's just so beautiful looking. The mechanical shifting of everything feels logical and designed to work. It doesn't just magically shift you into something else. It's, you, you can tell it was designed to have movable rooms that is, exist in a 3D space that can get shifted in and out with all real physics and everything. It's great. Here's the aforementioned clockwork soldier they have to deal with. And by deal with, I mostly mean just avoid. At least for now, when we're carrying Sokolov, it's easier this way. And that means we're pretty much done in here. I'm going to go back in, pick up the blueprints, the rune, etc. And then we are going to use them all. There's, like I mentioned, a place in Upper Aventa that I wanted to check out before we leave the level entirely. So that's where we're going to go next. It's one of the apartments which has a few civilians in it. Now, civilians can be tricky. Generally, they don't act as if you've been spotted by enemies, if they just see you immediately. But if you stick around for a while and go very close to them, then they will get red lightning bolts over their heads and decide, oh, you're really dangerous and we're going to go call a guard. That means you've been detected. Of course, you can't... You want to avoid killing them, obviously, and it depends as well. So for this room, we are going to try something that might feel like a little bit of a waste, but if you're going for the ghost achievement and everything, then hey, it might be worth it. Hi I guys. Face. Don't mind me. Can't Just, do you know, hello. I'm, uh, I'm the good guy, guys. I'm, uh, I'm the good guy. It's for a good cause, though. They have a rune here, and that's something we definitely don't want to leave behind. With this rune, we now have six, which is exactly how much we need to upgrade. Bend time to stop time. That is incredibly fun to use. So let's go back to Lower Venta. We need to find Megan and bring Sokolov to her. Go back to the Dreadful Whale. Or 
Majesty Delilah Caldwin. Now, as soon as we end up in Lower Aventa, we will, for the first time, run into the witches. When else? You're no good otherwise. Like she's the only one who knows how to gather black mandrake fruit. They've taken out the remaining howlers and civilians. And how about we test out stop time? The best part is we can literally pick it up in midair. When you don't have domino, you'll have to satisfy yourself with stop time. Mariah, Heather, and Kai were ordered by Delilah to watch for our friend from Dunwall. You did it. How is he? Frail and wounded, but he'll recover. I didn't think it was possible. You must have a story to tell. I'll hear it back at the ship. All right. The Another strange visit to the void. The void again, but it feels different. Those roots don't bode well. Surprised I can pull you into this place? The outsider marked me long ago. I made you flee your precious tower and turned Emily into cold stone. How difficult for you. But when I was young, sweet Jessamine and I were closest sisters, sharing a secret. Emperor Caldwin had another daughter, born in shame to a kitchen maid. What's she playing at? Maybe how is the question? And here we hear Delilah's backstory, how she became who she is. There's some question to how truthful Delilah is, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that she's mostly telling the truth. You're never really offered any alternative to the story she tells, so why disbelieve it? During the day, Jessamine and I played games in the tower, but at night I'd go back to the servants' quarters to cockroaches and thin gruel. Emperor Daddy would visit and tell me if I was good. Next year, I'd be old enough to come to court to be a princess. Then one day, pretty Jessamine broke something worth a fortune, and the spy master caught us. She claimed I did it, and he whipped me in the garden house until I bled. My mother lost her kitchen job, and that night we were out on the street with no place to sleep. I didn't break it. Would you like to tell me? So Jessamine told Spymaster that I did it. Does that make her the fault of everything? Of course not. That's one individual instance. Delilah has to stand for her own actions. Mother and I saw the nastiest parts of Dunwall, ending up in debtor's prison. Jessamine died quick on an assassin's blade, but my mother lingered for weeks after a fat guard broke her jaw. They threw me out when she died. I looked up at the lights of Dunwall Tower and swore revenge. Washing bedsheets in a brothel, I painted on the side, until Anton Sokolov took me as a student. That's the polite word for it. 
I was crafty even before the Outsider marked me, and survived the worst the Empire could offer. Now, it's your turn. My mother's sick. She needs help. Your mother kicked off while you were out begging. She's another bag of bones now, girl. What? No! The sentence is served and she'll be tossed out with the others. You can't stay here anymore. This is true, and how much is Delilah's warped imagination? <laughs> 